Good morning. Yeah, it's a nice spot. Safe for the night. Very quiet. Uh, yeah, it's mostly when you can park in, in in at a parking lot near a cemetery or something. It's mostly quiet. But uh, it's not only for the visitors of the cemetery. It's uh, also a few apartments down there. And people park here also. But yeah, no problem. Um, oh yeah, I slept very well. Uh, yeah, the bus is tilted a bit. So I, I noticed that <laughs> this morning in my uh, bowl with water for <laughs> washing. And uh, all the water was... Uh, <laughs> going to the driver's side so uh, yeah I knew that but uh, I was very curious I, I didn't have uh, any trouble sleeping and no headaches this morning because yeah my head is on the driver's side so but uh, yeah no no issues there so and uh, the sun was uh, like I said yesterday on that side shining right into the uh, van so that's very nice. That's why we, I wanted to stay like this. And um, today of the day, we are going to try to get to La Rochelle. And that's about 150 kilometers, I believe. Um, so that's not really a, a problem. Um, first, we are going into town, uh, just right of that apartment complex and the cemetery in between there is a, a little um, part that you can take uh, and then you're right up at the church and there are also a few stores and a bakery that's where I want to stop uh, for sure and uh, I saw yesterday evening there was also one bar with a terrace so check if that one's open and we can have a cup of coffee there maybe uh, added uh, another YouTube film video so that can um, a out right away or uh, while we're driving that is also a possibility so uh, yeah that's uh, the plan for now <laughs> there she is <laughs> sit down on the terrace and a coffee yeah, this is not a great view uh, at the harbor or the ocean or the Mediterranean or whatever, but it's a nice place to just have a cup of coffee. I'm going to try to edit uh, a YouTube film, video for you guys. So, let's go. It's also a thing, when the possibility occurs, you will grab it. So, here at the cemetery, there is uh, uh, is water. Oh, I was at the cemetery, so I've got a 5 liter uh, container where there was drinking water in it and I just uh, filled that up. I won't fill up my complete water tank now, that would be, yeah, I find it a bit too much, but I could, but uh, I don't use that much water, though, so I'm not... Uh, So I think, let's see, yeah, it's about half, so, nah, and it goes in there now. Yes, we are driving again, we left the parking place at the cemetery, uh, for good measures, I did fill up an, uh, another 5 liter uh, the at the cemetery, now, uh, now the, the 25 liter tank is almost full, another 5 liter wouldn't have fit, so yeah. But we're on our way to La Rochelle, and uh, the navigation says a 3 hour drive, I believe about 150 kilometers, so probably um, not as much highway as yesterday, but uh, we'll see, um, and um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll definitely get back to you guys on the road. <laughs> Uh, on the highway, a uh, correction about uh, kilometers. Um, it were, it's still about uh, 200.
about 200 or so. So, uh, yeah. And uh, three hour drive. Um, no problem, we'll see how late we get there. It's, uh, yeah. I don't mind. Uh, also checked um, gas prices in this uh, area. They were way over 140. Uh, in the neighborhood of La Rochelle, they were around 140. And Nantes, that is our direction afterwards, is uh, about um, between the 135, 138. So 200 kilometers to go to La Rochelle, then we have 550 with this tank, so that should not be a problem, uh, even not to get to uh, Nantes, so uh, yeah, that's where we'll try to fill up again, in that area, maybe even more uh, inland, just, uh, yeah, we'll see, so. We are off the highway, we um, passed Bordeaux, so we're north of Bordeaux, when you look at the map, you see the um, where the Dordogne is exiting into the Atlantic Ocean, uh, just from Bordeaux north. There, um, it widens, and uh, we are on the uh, um, on the piece of land on the north side of that bay. And uh, yeah, I believe Royan is on this stretch. So, yeah, for the people who like this, we have kind of an idea where we are now. We are on um, a D road, so uh, yeah, we'll be uh, driving to villages, fields, uh, and we're of course, we are now in the Bordeaux wine region also. We are on the uh, Route du Vin du Bordeaux. Na 1 kilometer, neem op de rotonde de tweede afslag. Ja, we rijden hier ook langs allemaal van die wijndomeinen. Sommige heel chic, sommige zien er een beetje vervallen uit. En uh, we zijn weer uh, ja, in Frankrijk, dus uh, de gilet jaune, de gele hesjes, die hebben we alweer op verschillende plaatsen gezien. Het zag ik een uh, uh, verzamelpunt waar mensen pallets kunnen nog drie kilometer. deponeren. Ik uh, kan me ook totaal niet vinden in de berichtgeving die ik lees vanuit Nederland. Hè, dat uh, de gele hesjes dat steeds meer problemen en steeds meer Fransen willen het niet en zijn dat tegen. En uh, dat het gedaan moet zijn en zoiets allemaal. Dat, er, uh, uh, dat het onruststokers zijn, et cetera, et cetera. Nou, wat ik tegengekomen ben hier in Frankrijk, ging allemaal heel gemoedelijk. Totaal geen agressieve sfeer of helemaal niks. Zelfs daar waar het verkeer tegengehouden werd, er was ook er was niks. Er werd gewoon, er was heel gemoedelijk. Er werden praatjes gemaakt, er was met vlaggen gewapperd en, eh, en dergelijke. Nergens, eh, ja, van dat soort eh, dingen. Ik heb ook het idee dat het meer gewoon oproerkraaiers die je bij alles vindt, die je bij voetbalwedstrijden en... Eh, overal vindt dat die zich mengen onder groepen waar gedemonstreerd worden en dat dat de problemen veroorzaken zijn en niet per se de gele hesjes. Uh, ook hier met, uh, um, als je kijkt naar de steun, waar we het daarover hebben, hoeveel auto's dat je niet ziet rijden met een gele hesje op het dashboard of uh, over de stoel getrokken of zoiets. Uh, dat was een stukje terug een inzamelpunt voor pallets voor de gele hesjes. Want daar bouwen ze dan, um, dat heb ik ook al gezien, daar bouwen ze dan een soort hutjes van en dergelijke waar ze natuurlijk droog staan als het regent of een beetje uit de wind of wat dan ook. En er worden ook brandstapels van gemaakt. Ik heb nog geen één keer zo'n stapel in de hands gezien, maar ze liggen er wel. Niet overal, maar op sommige plaatsen. Dus ja, ik weet het niet. Ik vind altijd, ik, ik, uh, ik heb steeds meer een beetje een antipathie tegen het nieuws omdat het nieuws wat gebracht wordt, ja, ik weet het niet. 
Maar wat dat betreft kan ik me wel achter Trump sparen. Dat er heel veel nieuws gewoon gemaakt worden om uh, de, niet, de mensen af te leiden of zoiets van uh, andere dingen. Het is allemaal niet zo'n ellende zoals voorgespiegeld wordt. En natuurlijk, ik bedoel uh, hetzelfde met de gele Na 400 meter recht doorrijden. Daarna neem op de rotonde de tweede afslag. Als de overheid vindt dat ze te lastig worden, ja, dan moet er iets aan gebeuren. Dus dan moet dus in ieder geval zorgen dat de steun voor de gele hersjes weggaat. Dus dan krijgen we meer dat de gele hersjes, uh, ja, dat het toch niet allemaal zo hoge geur op aan de schijn is zoals we het voorgedaan en bla bla allemaal. Maar of dat het daadwerkelijk is of dat er gewoon dingen uitgepikt worden. Na 200 meter, en, uh, neem op de rotonde de tweede afslag. En dan word ik weer gelijk als complotdenker weggezet waarschijnlijk, maar dat interesseert me ook niet zoveel. Ik heb de mijn eigen afslag. mening gelukkig nog steeds. En uh, het zou me zelfs niet verbazen, ik niet dat het zo is, maar het zou me niet verbazen als er vanuit overheidswegen juist oproerkraaiers onder de protesten gestuurd worden. Om te zorgen voor uh, gerommel. Natuurlijk Volg zal dat deze route nog twee kilometer. Nooit van zijn leven via officiële kanalen bevestigd worden of wat dan ook. En uh, het zal waarschijnlijk ook wel uh, nooit zo gebeuren dat het terug te leiden is tot. Maar uh, er wordt altijd zo gedaan over uh, ex oostblok landen, over Rusland, over China, weet niet wat. Maar uh, reken maar dat er. Uh, in veel westerse landen ook dergelijke praktijken op nagehouden worden als het uh, de regeringen goed uitkomt. Maar goed, <laughs> zijn er weer een brabbelen? Nou, ik zal jullie weer even alleen laten, even bekomen. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are, of course we are in France, so we uh, we've seen. Uh, de yellow uh, vests again a few times and uh, yeah, I don't know how it is in English media but uh, what I see of the Dutch and German media na 400 meter neem op de rotonde de tweede afslag they are more often put, um, put in the media as uh, yeah, um, troublemakers and stuff like that and uh, dat de uh, support voor de uh, yellow vests uh, in France is, uh, is, is going down en stuff like that. De tweede afslag. But of what I've seen personally, I I cannot see that. There is uh, I've seen them a lot on my way up to Spain or down to Spain and out on my way up uh, back to uh, Holland. I have never seen aggression or whatever. It was always easy going and even where traffic was put aside or stopped or slowed down or whatever, it was it was always Volg easy going. And nog just a bit of waving with flags and uh, handing over pamph pamphlets, uh, um, leaflets and uh, Stuff like that, uh, conversations, and but never any yeah, aggression or, or what, or, or even anything close. And um, also the support. Uh, you see so many cars driving around with uh, yellow vests on the dashboard, or put on a seat, or even front yard, uh, gardens, houses. With a yellow vest, vest on the stick. So, and uh, just a, a little bit back, I passed uh, a collection point for uh, wooden pallets uh, for the yellow vest. And they build shelters with that for rain and wind, but they also pile them up for, yeah, that it looks like uh, a fire um, pile. But I've never seen one burning, but they are there. But so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it's more like the hooligans you have with the football matches and stuff like that. People who are always looking for making trouble and uh, they mix under the the the, yeah, the peaceful protesters and they cause the the the, pro the problems in my eyes. So and uh, yeah, I, I said it before. I I don't say it is the truth, 
but I won't be surprised if even from um, governments <laughs> down like hooligans are um, sent under the peaceful process uh, tests to cause a stir and to yeah to make trouble to make yellow vests look like trouble so you can then broadcast that in the media and yeah the normal people say yeah no we don't want the yellow vests they're protesting anymore because they are rioting uh, stuff like that so yeah I don't know I wouldn't be surprised they, all those Western governments have the mouth full of former Eastern Europe, Russia, China, and so that they do things like this. But I'm almost certain that he also uh, Western countries, if it suits them, they do the same. It's they're all in the pockets of big companies, and um, you see it in everything. And traveling ar around. They even open my eyes way more. It's no. So uh, also, yeah. Also for that, traveling is a, a good thing. You see things with your own eyes. You see, yeah. You see what is happening, and not only. I'm, I'm with every day. I, I'm more. I can. I can. And side with Trump on that. Media isn't. It isn't all. Yeah, <laughs> we even got someone in the Netherlands now who, uh, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, I don't know his, his first name, but Bergman he's called, and he, uh, he made a stir on American television uh, saying that uh, the big networks were all in the pockets of uh, uh, rich um, uh, companies and industrial uh, uh conglomerations and stuff like that so uh, yeah I like that so, uh, but because it's the truth I I, yeah, I think it's the truth it's my opinion and like so I say traveling I see all the things I hear on the news I don't see them in the real world really I don't it's made so much worse as that it is of course there are always bad people but there are such a minority that yeah, and you have them everywhere. So and, uh, you you don't have to travel. You probably have a few of them in your own hometown. So, and that doesn't say that your hometown is a bad town. No, it's just those few people. And sometimes they yeah they ruin it for the rest. But yeah. I leave you guys now because uh, there's a car coming up. That's why I'm not overtaking. Stupid French. Beep. <laughs> yeah, I leave you guys now. <laughs> I rambled uh, on enough. Uh, eight kilometer. I uh, noticed uh, today that uh, the trees are getting that green shine. The, the, the buds, the, the, uh, the leaves meter, are opening. Slowly the green uh, peeps through. Not only like here yeah, on the left, the fruit trees are blooming, and uh, but uh, yeah, also uh, the the leaves are uh, are appearing slowly. But yeah, just enjoying the the scenery with me. I had to go around that bag. I never drive over a bag like that because you never know what's in it. So uh, when I can, when I go around it. Yeah, this is completely different from what we saw in Spain and stuff, but I like this anyway. It's, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I like France. I've always liked France. And I probably always will be. But this is very nice too. I like this. It's a... Uh, Easy, easy ride, drive like this. Uh, I, of course, the weather is fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, nice. 
stopped at the supermarket, Super U, and I've been there for a while. But we're on the way now, it's uh, 113 kilometers left. Na 300 meter, neem op de So, yeah. We'll see. Oh yes, and uh, I will try to stop somewhere uh, along the railway. Bay. Uh, just, uh, Volg deze route nog 10 kilometer. Just let Bo uh, have something to drink, have self something to drink, had something to drink myself. And uh, but uh, yeah, I just want to stop for uh, Bo just so she can stretch her legs a bit. I've been walking the supermarket, so I'm alright, but uh, yeah, I wanted it for uh, for Paul. And the parking lot at the supermarket is not really a place uh, yeah, for her to uh, roam around. So, um, yeah, trying to find uh, a spot uh, somewhere on the grass or something. Uh, uh, she can run around a bit. Yeah, and one of those little villages always nice I like those little towns the old French buildings and sometimes a little square and a church and you're lucky a bar or a restaurant See, uh, you find them in every little uh, town, Cafu Express. Yes, yeah, even a cinema in this town. Yeah, it's a bit bigger. Here's the church, square in front, little bar to the left. <laughs> you don't have to run, I'll huh? slow down. Bakery. Na 700 meter recht doorrijden. Yeah, I was still in the south, so you see a lot is closed now, and they open up about. Yeah, it depends a bit. But it, it's now half past three, and sometimes they open half past three, four, half past four. Ah, well, mostly they open by then. But uh, yeah. The sun has been shining on it, I think, because it says it's 28. Yeah, that it, that's it. It's not. I know it's not. But um, yeah, I just saw a thermometer, and um, it said 23. So yeah, that's a uh, summer day in my uh, in my book. <laughs> yeah, we are getting closer. It's about. 50 kilometers left, uh, a good half an hour, three quarters of an hour drive. So uh, we're getting closer to uh, La Rochelle. I, it was a fairly nice drive today. Um, I enjoyed myself. It was a lot of uh, yeah, little cozy villages and uh, stretches between uh, fields and uh, woods and uh, yeah. No, I, uh, I thought it was a good day. And yeah, the weather was beautiful again. So, uh, yeah. What more could you want? Yeah, we are back on the highway. Um, I believe this stretch brings us right up to La Rochelle. So it's about 20-25 kilometers to a destination and the highway, uh, I believe, takes us right into uh, La Rochelle. So uh, yeah, that's the last piece. The sun is getting lower, so... 
probably see you guys when we arrive in La Rochelle. Right here, some companies with marine stuff right at the border of the harbor. There's some kind of carnival going on down there. So I hope that doesn't go through all night, but we'll see. This is where we park up and we're gonna spend the night. The pleasure yard harbor. Oh, it's nice. Boo! Now look, there's also a truck camper. Nice. Yeah, this is what I remember. Last time I was here, there was the Red Bull um, Extreme Dive event was uh, here, and they built it on that highest point, uh, another stage, I don't know how many meters up from that uh, highest tower, and then uh, the participants had to dive from there into the harbor, of course, with the fair amount of uh, saltos and whatever twists and turns because the more crazy the better you know how it is yeah this is beautiful this is a beautiful piece of art it shows the french colonies where the french settled asia africa of course Morocco, Algeria, France. I don't know what that is on the. I think it's a Black Sea, but what, what country is up there? I don't know. Yeah, South America. I think uh, French Guiana, in the Antilles. Uh, Canada, of course. Uh, I just said uh, New Orleans, I think. <laughs> And the little islands in ocean, in the uh, Pacific. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of art. I thought I'd just take another shot because there's still light left now. I don't know how long there's light left, so I'm just showing you guys because it's really beautiful. A little boat, uh, like a taxi just came on came across sun setting at the ocean yeah really amazing that's the old port we're going over there but i don't know if there's enough light to film you film for you guys so there's some kind of old wooden ship like a an old pirate ship nice it's the uh, it has a ramp with, uh, with um, banners on, so I guess it's there for to stay. I don't know if it's some kind of uh, decoration you can visit, or uh, like a museum, or entertainment thing, or eat on it, I don't know. Because there's uh, someone dressed up right in front, and there's another one in the mast. Yeah. Oh, the sun is really setting. Still light, so I thought I'd give you a 360 from this side. There's uh, a big fair wheel. Old wooden buildings with a lot of terraces out. Gravity art. Yeah, they are abandoned buildings, so uh, yeah, suited for that. And a drawbridge with a big heavy weight on this side, it looks like. Yeah, it would be nice to see that one uh, go up. We are uh, at the harbor, at the inland uh, side of the portal 
between those uh, two big towers, they uh, could and probably still can put up a huge chain so yeah, enemy ships could not get into the harbor. There is a sign somewhere that explains the whole thing, but it's probably on the other side, I don't know. Here's the lighthouse, it's flashing its light. Yeah, very beautiful. And I'm not the only one that thinks it is, because a lot of people filming and taking pictures. <laughs> And on the other side of the harbor, there is the little boat I told you guys about. But it looks very close at the moment. We're going to check it out if it's still a restaurant and if it's open in the morning. Yeah, and else, yeah, bad luck then. Here's a beautiful ferry ride. It's uh, with a maritime theme. So, uh, yeah, ships seahorses, mermaids, an air balloon I see, see flying fishes, dolphins, some kind of old Jules Verne like submarine, a ship, yeah beautiful. <laughs> Le Petit Bleu, that was the name, yes, they're close, there's a sign up that they'll open whenever the weather is better, but if they, the sign's still up, they didn't open today, so probably not tomorrow either, because today should have been better weather than tomorrow, too sad. The Tour de Horloge. Let's try if this is any good. A breaking wave. <laughs> 